Unsyndicated presents. Off the air with Sean the Legion. Up. I, I know a lot of people are probably busy right now. There's a little college hockey game. There's a, a little game in the NHL as well that people are watching. But the beautiful thing about doing this show is you don't have to be live. You can watch it later. Like, and if you're watching it later, I hope that your team won tonight. How's that? Very nice. Sean Belegian with you. Uh, Gordy Brown, the head coach of the Motor City Rockers, is going to be joining us in a little bit. Uh, of course, the Rockers, uh, their last home game this weekend. Then they're going to get to the playoffs. I'm going to pick Gordy's brain about what he's seen with the Red Wings and uh, certainly with college hockey as well. I know that's something he's keeping an eye on. Our buddy Blake is going to join us in a few minutes. And it, it's interesting because Todd and I were talking about this before the show began. It depends what age you were. If you didn't live through the O.J. Simpson thing, whether it be from, I don't even want to call it the car chase, okay? Because it, it wasn't a chase. The car follow to all the craziness of that day and into the summer and into the quote-unquote trial of the century. If you weren't around, you're never going to get it. And a few years ago, remember that show was on FX. They had that, that OJ show on FX. And my kids read about it. And they heard about it and they asked me to try to explain what the phenomenon was like, how, like dad, what was it like? And Todd and I were just talking about it. It was one of those things. If you didn't live through it, you, you just, you don't know. It was one of those moments. Everybody knows exactly where they were when the car chase was happening. And, um, when the trial ended, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the analogy that I came up with for my kids, okay? I said, let's use Tom Brady as an example. Tom Brady's the biggest star in football, right? Yeah. I said, so about 15 years after Tom Brady's career ends, he murders Giselle and a friend of Giselle's. How's that? In their eyes, like, whoa. I mean, because really that, right? Is is that what we can compare it to? O.J. Simpson was a flat-out star, not only on the football field, but he did movies in broadcasting, et cetera, et cetera. He was, uh, listen, a lovable guy. Always had a smile on his face, you know, had the cool nickname, you know, the juice, et cetera, et cetera. He was a bona fide star. And that was the only analogy I could come up with to make my kids understand it. So if you're by some chance, one of the younger people out there that are watching this right now, um, that would be the analogy that I gave you. Think Tom Brady now about what? 13 years from now, uh, murdering his ex-wife and then getting away with it. Because that's exactly what happened. I mean, he got away with it. And it was interesting what made it so incredible. And I, I listen, I can't wait to talk to Blake about this. Um, there was a time, and, and Todd and I were also discussing this. Um, there were a lot of people that like thought he was innocent after the first trial. After the second trial, the civil trial, if you still thought he was innocent, you were lying to everybody, most importantly yourself. It was so blatantly obvious that he mur murdered his ex-wife and Ron Goldman, who just happened to be at, at the wrong place at the wrong time. It was, it was so blatantly obvious, but it really was a situation for a while it, it was it wasn't pretty and people were getting in arguments and you know there there were you know people celebrating and 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 people weeping and everything it was a 
and I hate to say this because you're talking about a man getting away with two murders and, and two innocent victims. It was a cultural phenomenon. Todd, would you agree with me? I'm, I'm not going too far with that, am I? I see Todd shaking his head right now. Denver wins in overtime. See, this is what happens when we're on the show. This, this is what happens. Denver knocks off uh, Boston. So um, I think all the people that thought that it would be an all-Boston final are probably weeping right now, and certainly Michigan's going to have a little something to say about that. That game's coming up shortly. Uh, but thank you, Jason, for that. Uh, Jim said OJ was a superstar in the rental car business, those Hertz commercials. They were everywhere. OJ running through the 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 airport, jumping over chairs, et cetera, et cetera. It really was something that I don't think younger people understand how big OJ Simpson was. Movies, television commercials, uh, broadcasting. It, it was it was amazing. Uh, OJ Simpson passed away. Uh, yesterday, as it were, it was announced this morning. Uh, but I, I, it just seems like a few weeks ago that that you know the news came out that he had cancer, and, and then I, I actually looked, and it was it was a couple months ago. But obviously, it, it sounds like it's it's something he was dealing with longer uh, than that. He went downhill quickly, and um, all the things that we talked about with O.J. Simpson being a big star, O.J. Simpson will not be remembered for those things. It's just not going to happen. I, I think everybody is going to remember him for the murders, the trial, the car chase, uh, and, and all the shenanigans that went on around his life. It, it is truly amazing how that happened. Uh, I believe it's still intermission, by the way, of the Red Wings game. I don't know why I'm telling you because chances are you're watching it right now, but I'm going to tell you anyway, 2-2 two, two Red Wings, Pens, must win game for the Red Wings. Uh, just a programming note, Shep and I are going to be on at uh, 10 a.m. tomorrow. And um, we were talking about something cool that kind of blew up on Facebook. Uh, we are going to do a series of, I guess the best way to say it, looking back at uh, our beloved radio station, The Fan. So hopefully you can check that out. We'll be talking about, you know, what we want to do with it during the show tomorrow, hitting on many other things, including what Michigan and BC uh, does. That's coming up in just a few minutes. But we're going to be talking about uh, the the fan, and it's going to be fun. You know, I reached out to a lot of guys already that worked for the fan and, and, and they're kind of fired up to go down memory lane. And it's amazing. Uh, if you follow me on Facebook or you follow us on Facebook, we, we had just a massive thread on there. Some of the things that people remember, it is unbelievable. There, there were things that I was talking to my old producer, shout out Doug Todd, the inspector, angry Doug Todd. And I was like, Dude, I don't even remember that. And and we were, you know, kind of reminding each other of, of things. And, oh, dude, do you remember that one time you did, like, the hockey radio show and then you had to race over to Fox 2 to do the the show for during the Stanley Cup and everything? And, um, gosh, it just it just going down memory lane is, is so much fun. Um, Blaine said, will AC drive the hearse? That's... <laughs> Jim, I, I I don't know if you saw what I posted. I posted a picture of uh, uh, his good buddy, Al Cowlings, kind of fixing a tie. And I said, well, you always want to look good when you go meet Satan. So that's exactly what OJ is going to be doing is he's going to meet Satan. Uh, Jason said, did I miss all the Officer Nordberg talk? Yes, the naked gun stuff. Um, OJ, Officer Nordberg. Um, OJ was a big part of that. It was, and, and Jason and Jim, you guys are, you know, of the older generation. You, you guys both know this. It was, it was insane. It, it was absolutely insane. And, and, and there were, there were so many moments where you're like, is this really happening? Like that night, that night, you know, you have the NBA finals, you have an epic, uh, uh, Stanley cup series going on at the same time. It's a Friday night, you know, summer's just starting and then you see this chase down the freeways in L.A. 
it it was just it was insane. And Jason, Jim, I don't know if you heard it earlier. The only thing that I could compl- compare it to and try to make my kids in particular understand is if Tom Brady did that years from now. That that's the only thing. I mean, OJ was that big of a star. I mean, he had a Heisman Trophy, he had a phenomenal NFL career. It was it was absolutely amazing that we got to that point. But uh, so many things uh, going on, and obviously uh, we're going to catch up with Blake. I promised Blake that I, I'll get into the Jared Goff discussion in a little bit. And in case you missed it, uh, Jared Goff, I'll just give you the cliff notes because I want to get into this with Blake. I, I want to get the the younger person's account, maybe somebody who hasn't been, quote unquote, in the media. I, I want to. Um, so Jared Goff came out and basically said that um, the Detroit media is negative and they need to drop the negativity, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I think there's some some being the key and operative word. I think there's some validity to that, to what he's saying. I do. I'll be the fir- I'll be the first guy to say it. Part of it is, and I'm I'm going to save the crux of the conversation. Part of it is, and I hope that you guys out there can get my back when I say this. I want to be the first person. If I get something wrong, I want to be the first person to say I got something wrong. I don't want somebody else to come at me. Really, I want to be the first person to say it. And listen, Jared Goff, if you're watching, I was wrong about you. But I'm going to say with a caveat, stay tuned. That's what we call in the business a tease. I think there are two sides to a story, okay? And I think that Jared Goff and a lot of uh, the people that support Jared Goff, quite frankly, aren't looking at the other side of the story because there are two sides to the story here is is he right that people have no reason to be negative about the lions right now absolutely no question zero zilch nada how can you they want a division they want a couple playoff games um how can you do that i don't know so that's something I, I, I'm i intrigued to hear. Blake was all kind of worked up about that. So I'm intrigued to hear Blake's uh, side. And I'm going to throw the other side out there that I would say to Jared Goff. And I would say to the many people who still, and some of them watching this, I'm waiting for a wiseacre to show up in the in the chat and bring it up. Listen, I point blank said many times, Jared Goff is not the guy. Jared Goff is a bridge. I I can't tell you how many times I said something like that. Are you ready? Here it comes. And and, and this is part of the problem because I think a lot of people in my business have an issue with using these words. They're three simple words. And your your skin's not going to fall off when you say it, okay? I was wrong. I was wrong. Better than any of us thought, okay? So give him his flowers for that. Give him his due for that. But... And we'll get into it later when Blake joins us. Uh, The flip side to that is a little word I like to use called ownership. There's some things that need to be owned as well, and and we'll get into that. Uh, Jason said, angry Doug Todd can't remember anything due to his blackout rage issues. He was an angry, angry, angry man. All right, as I mentioned, uh, really happy to be joined by this guy. Not only is he an outstanding coach, Uh, He's been a buddy of mine for a few years. I'm happy for the success that he's having uh, with the Motor City Rockers, and and their season isn't over by a long shot, okay? They got a couple games this week, including one at Big Boy Arena. Get out there, support the boys. Uh, But the guy that has been steering the ship, he is at the helm of this squad, is kindly joining us right (laughs) now. Let's bring it. You just want to walk people over, the coach of the Motor City Rockers, Mr. Gordy Brown. How are you, Gordy? I'm doing good, Sean. You, you can't figure out which game I'm waiting for. I, you know what? That that's 
the the thing is, and I, I'm glad that we could get, talk to you before that other game started. Yeah. The cool thing about doing this, Gordy, before you came on, that's what I said. I said, you know, I understand a lot of people are watching the wings right now. I understand a lot of people are going to tune out in regards to uh, what we're doing when Michigan comes on. I don't blame you at all. You can catch the show later. And Gordy, before your beloved Michigan Wolverines start, I'm glad we get a chance to have a conversation. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know, it's funny because it's one of those things now that you're in this position where, you know, a lot of these are recorded and people watch them later and they get their chance and they can kind of, um, you know, skip through me if they don't want to hear me and they're waiting for Blake later ah. um, to discuss uh, Jared Goff or whatever. But at the same time, I'm watching the DU game earlier. You know, I've got it on. I've got the Wings game on. I'm waiting for the Michigan game. I want to see what Washington Buffalo's doing. You know, I'm studying film on the next teams for the playoffs. It's all hockey, so it's it's fun um, and, and to get ready to go. So this is this is nice that we can uh, take a little time and talk about all kinds of hockey. Well, yeah, twist my arm a little bit. Uh, Gordy knows a little something about hockey. You know what? I let me let me start with the college because obviously you're you're jacked up about the Wolverines and rightfully so. Coach Narado, you got to give him credit for getting them to this point. Just a few weeks ago, there were people out there wondering if they even got into the tournament, and here they are uh, in the Final Four. Gordy, I feel when I looked at this Final Four. That there was, if there was one team that might be able to knock off the wagon that is BC, mm-hmm. it was this Michigan team because of the talent that they have. Listen, BC's a favorite for a reason, okay? But I think the talent that Michigan has, if there's one team that can knock them off, I think it's the Wolverines. Well, I think you have the, the four teams that are represented right now are very skilled. Uh, obviously, BC with all the draft picks. Um, you know, you turn on NHL network and you hear them with the final four talking about all these guys that are NHL potential and where can they go and who can they help in the next year or two, if they're not already drafted by somebody. But what I kind of noticed this year with Michigan was they didn't really start playing defense until, I don't know, maybe the second weekend of February. And you could see that start to turn, um, you know, went to the overtime game when they lost to state and that, that great battle, uh, for the big 10 championship. Um, you know, it was a tight game. I mean, when Larson scored that power play goal at the time, it, you know, it, this video is in my head because I watched so much video, but the four guys from Michigan off the face off over committed outside the dot. All of a sudden Larson's just standing in the slot yeah. by himself. Puck, Puck takes two bounces to him and he gets it off real quick and, and it's there, but those two quick goals, you know, they didn't stop, right? They come right back. And after they scored those two quick ones, watch their defense, watch how they defend. They're ma- everybody's back. Everybody's making sure there's nobody getting behind us. And, you know, that's what you – I hate to jump around, but that's what you kind of saw, you know, if you watch the Washington Wings game, yeah, okay, you outshot them, right? I, the Washington goalie played great the other night. But Washington just kind of stood around and, like, eh, we're going to do what we can. Yeah, we're a little tired. A little, we're a little older, so we're just chipping out. And then when we get our chances, we'll score. And if we get a lead, hey, we'll shut it down. And I think that goes into – if you look at Washington's plus minus, people are talking about, well, why are they so minus? Well, they usually win 2-1 to one or 3-2. to two. And then they lose six to one, six yeah. to three. Yeah. And they just, you know, they they win, they they win one, they lose one, but all of a sudden they're minus two. They win one, they lose one, they're they're now minus, you know, five. And it's like, what's going on? But yet they're still in the hunt. So you you start to see these teams like, okay, why why are guys saying it's a playoff feel right now for any of these teams? Because they're all starting to play defense yep. and then they're defending. And now, you know, I get involved in a little bit of the of the of the betting that's legal. And I sit there and go, watch, start watching the unders. You watch the overs early. Now you're watching the unders um, because, you know, you'll see that six and a half is a magic number. We'll wait till the playoffs. All of a sudden you'll start seeing your six and a half to a six, six to a five and a half. You know, sometimes if it gets touched at five and a half, they're, they're expecting it uh, a good goalie battle. So now it's down to five. I mean, that's a rare that it happens, but you start seeing those things. And it's really, it's watching these guys play and understanding like, hey, I'm going to go my 25, 30 seconds and you are not scoring on my shift. Right. And that's when special teams become so important in any of these games. And I, I didn't get to see the, all the goals there for that DU game, but I'm going to, I'm going to, again, I'm jumping all around. Go I, wanna, I, I, made a comment. I made a comment to some friends of mine on a thread that I liked the first game. One team had talent and I felt like the other team had the coaching. I am a fan of the Denver coach of, of, um, uh, David, I almost said Matt because Matt played in the NHL, mm-hmm. but 
I'm a fan of David. And if you look at the history of that guy, that's a guy that didn't even play. He, he went to Shaddix, then started coaching, probably on his, I hate to say it, on his brother's coattails because his brother was at Denver at the time. But if you look at him, he's got like 15 years of just coaching. That's a 34-year-old guy. And I've already told my buddies, that guy should be an assistant, at least an assistant somewhere in the NHL in the next two to three years if he wants to. I'm sure life's pretty good in Denver form. Um, but if he wanted to, that's a guy that could probably be in the NHL as an assistant, run his five years, six years of assistant, and all of a sudden he's in his early 40s and he's a coach somewhere, right, of, of a team. Because who's coming up? All the college guys that he's been around at the World Juniors and, and going to events. So they start seeing him and they respect him and they go, okay, now we've been in the league five years. We want this guy to coach us. And, you know, you, and you can see the history of that with other guys are in the league that coach college for a long time. They start going, well, hey, half the league is college players. Yep. Let's let's get them here. Um, I just glanced over, Sean. Looks like 3-2, and everybody's tapping uh, Sid the kid. So I got to let my wife know the baby's is I just in looked at goal. the phone, too. That's, <laughs> by the way, uh, Gordy, one of the things that makes me sick to my stomach is, is the people around here that still, I don't know, live in 2008 and 2009. Yeah. Sidney Crosby is an absolute treasure to the National Hockey League. Yep. And I've had people, oh, why don't you make love to him already? I, <laughs> I love watching Sidney Crosby. I, I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. As yep. a coach, as a student of the game, it's everything that Sidney Crosby does. Seriously. And I, I'm not I'm not going to build an altar to him, but oh my goodness, drop it already. The guy's a phenomenal hockey player. I'm sure, I'm sure you would have proposed to him if he was a hab for life, but <laughs> Um, I think he gets that here and there's probably a couple other towns that treat him that way, but other areas that are, you know, that are, I mean, obviously the Eastern conference has dealt with him so long, but I'm sure the hockey fans in Edmonton, Win Winnipeg have no problems with him. Yeah. I'm sure the ones, you know, even Colorado and, and Dallas have no real, no issues with them, um, that are hockey fans because they understand what he brings to the game. They understand the dynamic. They understand how long he's been playing. Um, I heard it today. Somebody's talking about, you know, the concussions he's had, how long he's, how many games he's missed because of injuries. And he keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. um, the guy likes to compete. Uh, who hasn't he made better around him? 100%. Right. Who hasn't he made everybody? Oh, Hey, I got traded. Oh, I'm going to go have to play for Pittsburgh. Who who are they putting you with? Uh, this, this Sid. Great. Well, you're going to average a half a point a game. So yeah. just make sure your skates are tied and go to the <laughs> net and you're going to, you know, you're going to get a point, right? So there's always those guys, and he's one of those guys that, that can do that. And I know when guys get traded away from Pittsburgh that have played with them, it's, oh, will that guy be able to do anything without Sid? And usually they can because now they've they've spent five, six, seven years. They understand how to play in the NHL. So Sid's the bonus point for them, right? But they typically got to get rid of somebody because they can't afford them and Sid and, well, and Malkin and everybody else. So, um, so it's, you know, it's good to see. And I got, I mean, I got respect for the guy, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we know the history, right? So absolutely, it, it is what it is. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a few Pittsburgh fans that don't like some of the wings uh, on those back-to-back -back years, right? So yeah, uh, Brett doing? asks, who would you take, uh, Ovi or Sid, if you could pick one? It's, it's. I don't want to say it's easy because I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to a guy who is a goal-scoring machine. He's, mm -hmm. he's up there with Mike Bossy in my lifetime for the term pure goal scorer, no mm -hmm. doubt. But uh, Gordy, I'll go first. I'll take Sid. I have no problem saying it. <laughs> um, I mean, I, it's funny because I was, I said, I would say early on, I would want Ovi just because uh, there was a stat the other day, how many hits he's had, how many goals mm -hmm. he's, he's performed. And that physical play, when those two first came in the league, was a lot more prevalent. I mean, you weren't really going to take a run at, at Ovi because he would just give it back. And you would probably get injured when he was listed at 225 pounds, but really was coming in at 240, 245. Um, you know, there's some other guys in the league that they like to hide their weight. Uh, shout out to Dusty Bufflin, but, um, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, he's 240. Really? I, there's a ton of other guys that look like rails that are 240s next to him. So, yeah. you know, you never bought that story. But, um you know, I'm a, I'm I'm a I don't want to say a Sid fan, but I got much respect for Sid. I mean, he's just done so many things, and then you know he does all. I mean, they both do it. They're all in the community, and they give back, and it's they get the accolades, and it's not about them. You know, they don't. Hey, great, how are you? I'm just I did my job, and and you know I'd do it again. Uh, I think that's a quote from something, but um, 
You bring up a great point about Ovi. I think people forget. Do you remember how much Malkin used to cry? I mean, that that was that was an ongoing bit because yeah. Malkin literally used to say, I thought Ovi and I were boys. Why did <laughs> he hit me? Well, yeah. what, what, what do you mean? Why does he yeah. hit you? It's hockey. Like, what, yeah. what, what do you take? You can still be boys and give it to your boy on the ice. And yeah. um, uh, my goodness gracious, the, the physicalities. Uh, my buddy Raymond said, Coach, I met you last year at Freddy the Pizza Man's restaurant. I offered to be the 62-year-old e-bug. Uh, so true. speaking of giving back, I, I know uh, our mutual friend, Freddie, the pizza man, you, yep. you guys have done so many good things, uh, Gordy, yep. uh, sensory rooms and, and, and helping out that that's awesome. An opportunity for you to talk about some of the things that you guys have going on. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, it goes back to you introducing us to each other, but, uh, you know, we've been trying to connect and myself, uh, my wife and I having four kids and two of them are autistic always trying to find ways to how, how can we give back to that uh, platform as much as we can. And, you know, Freddie is a great source. Um, <laughs> obviously, as, as we all know, locally after Dave Portney came through and kind of blew him up, everybody, you know, and then there was lines uh, down the block to get a pizza and people are standing outside at 10 a.m. and it's four degrees out. So they get their pizza because he doesn't open till 11 and all that fun stuff. But, you know, he's he's a lot more popular. Um you know, he's a great guy. When people actually meet him, he's such a nice guy oh. and, um, that they, they want to come back. And, and you can see, you know, it's nice to see all the different places that have given the money. And then he goes out to the schools and he does it, you know, in Michigan. I know he's done some in Canada now, um, but he's all around. He's building these rooms for these kids. And, you know, I've seen some statistics since we're involved with it in our family. Um, it's almost to a point now where it's it's we had figured out by the time our my youngest is seven. And by the time she's a senior, we'd figured out, and we're in the Hollow School District, there would be probably 100 kids in high school that would be autistic just in Howell. Mm. So I'm starting to see where, you know, some of the state funds are being diverted to put in programs because, they, you know, they're seeing the bigger picture that this is a need. And, and those places that maybe, you know, a little smaller, can't afford it, Freddie steps in and, and kind of handles those things and get some of the rooms and get some of the, the things they may need to help those teachers that are spending their countless hours to try to handle these students. Um, you know, they really can't go uh, one teacher to 20 of them. It's really a lot of that is one on one, two on one, maybe up to three students. So you got to have some resources to, to be able to do that. And, and Freddie's one of those uh, those guys that just steps up and helps out. And, and his boy as well uh, is on the autism spectrum. And you know, you can have those conversations of what you go through. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. It's, it's having the familiarity, um, camaraderie. I don't want to call it like being in the locker room, but when you get around 10 families, 20 families are going through similar things. It's a lot easier to talk to each other and say, Hey, what did you do? How did you, how did you go through this? Who did you see? You know? So it's, it's nice to have those resources around. He's Gordy Brown, the head coach of the Rockers. We'll get to the Rockers in just a second. Rockers in action this weekend. And then, of course, uh, the playoff start. Our mutual friend Ben Zalegi in there and Clint Robert. Uh, I, I know you're familiar with his work. You guys were on the same staff at Northville. And, of course, Clint doing a fantastic job out in Ann Arbor as well, uh, coaching out there with uh, the Irish, uh, Father Gabriel Richard. Hey, talk to me about this weekend. It's a huge weekend for you guys. Uh, this isn't just playing out the string. There's still a lot at stake in regards to, you know, who gets to be the home team, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of good things going on for you guys. I'm, I'm going to lobby the softball and, and, and talk about this weekend. Something for all the fans, not only the great hockey, but something for all the fans as well. Yeah, so something I didn't even get to tell you, Sean. So yesterday we actually had a banquet um, that involved both the players, staff, and and fans. So fans could come to it. We were at Fernhill uh, Golf Club there in Clinton Township. Uh, food was, you know, we, these are all sponsors, so food was provided by Sopranos. Um, a nice little kind of semi-formal event. So some people were dressed up, and and some people looked like hockey players. So um, it's a it's a good balance, and it was nice. You kind of we did some uh, inner awards, some awards within the the team, and um, you know, you're able to kind of go over things that we've done for the community and the people want to come out and they want to help and they want to donate. And, and that kind of building us into our, what, you know, the weekend and, and playoffs coming up. So for us this weekend, finishing off with Port Huron, uh, final games, games number 17 and 18 against Port Huron for the year. So we kind of know each other pretty well. 
Um, they're also in the playoffs. I think they've wrapped up, uh, I want to say, maybe third place on their division. But we are in a position with uh, Danbury in our division in which they are two points behind us. They have one game left. We have two games. So we need to pick up three points over the two games to solidify second place and have a home ice advantage for that first round. And, you know, for me, I, I, I want to have that last year, you know, we were fourth place, just got into the playoffs and, you know, very proud that we were able to get in our first season this year, doing a little bit better. Now we're in second place in our division, trying to solidify that home ice. And for me, it's really for the fans. Like if they can get a couple games and know, Hey, we can, uh, we don't necessarily have to watch them on the road. They can come home and, and host this in our own building. Um, just that feeling that that noise that you get and you get that sensation when the crowd is behind you and there's a big save or a big hit and those oohs and ahs and they're in your building and they're for you is a completely different vibe even when you hear them on the road when you know they're not necessarily for you unless you're the type of person that loves to be hated then and then guys will generate off that they you know they get that hey you you hate me when i come into town and um and i and i thrive off that but you know, that's a different person and not everybody thrives off that. So it's great to come home and handle that. And for us this weekend, uh, a great event the, the staff is putting on. We're going to have a uh, a tailgate for the last game um, on Saturday at 3.30. I, I had to find out more because I knew there was going to be rain this week. And then they explained to me, Gordy, the tailgate is inside the arena, <laughs> not outside. I said, great. I'll let my family know. So around the concourse of that bowl uh, inside Big, Bo- Big Boy Arena up top, they're going to start hosting – um, you know, some basic specials. I think uh, games at six, I think they're doing the old $2 beers, $1 hot dog, that type of stuff, you know, events going on, trying to get everybody for that last home game in the building as soon as they can. And, um, you know, uh, obviously try to promote the playoffs as well to have everybody back for those games. So I think after the game two, we're going to uh, skate with the players. Um, so people come out, jump on the ice. Um, I'm sure there's skate rental available as there always is for like a couple bucks if you need it. But it's a great, just kind of a great finishing of the year for us, knowing that we get to go on to the next round, um, you know, get to be another local team that's in the playoffs, <laughs> you know, and 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 kind of move on from there. So we're looking forward to it, uh, looking forward to some big crowds. I mean, I've got it where my friends are reaching out and uh, different people I know in the hockey community wanting to know, hey, what, you know, it's the first game at home. Is Are you on the road? And I have to keep telling everybody, stay tuned. Yeah, <laughs> watch I a game. That. Watch a game this weekend. Come on out. I get you more details and let you know what we're doing because we don't know. Um, in fact, we tried to set up the hotel this weekend, and they said we'll just wait till Monday. I was one of them. I, I hit Gordy up because seriously, I, I I said, you know what? I want to bring Todd and Mike and Blake out there for the playoff games, and um, you know, I, I, hopefully we get that opportunity. But in the meantime, it's a huge weekend for you guys. You guys got to finish strong this weekend. There's no doubt about that. Look at Jeff jumping in there, Prowler Nation. Hey, I love it. You know, you get a little rivalry going, right? I, yep. I, I think it's it's a beautiful thing. All right, couple things. Uh, I, I got to put you on the spot. Uh, how, how's your beloved team going to do tonight? How's Michigan going to do against BC? Well, let's, I, I'm, I'm more interested, you know, me now as, as getting involved in the tactical side of it. Um, I'd like to see what the tactician is. I mean, that's what I wanted to see in that Denver game is what was Carly, what, what was he going to do? Well, how yeah. are they going to do against all that talent and guys just work so hard in the D zone. I, you know, I didn't, I haven't seen the overtime goal, see how it was generated, but um, would love to see, you know, how long that, that overtime went. And, and that's what you're getting into is, is tactics and plays and how hard are you willing to defend? And you got to watch some of the getting amped up, you know, where you end up taking a stupid penalty because you, you got a little too much adrenaline. Um, I, I mean, I, I think they can pull it off because I'll be honest, I, I didn't think they were going to beat state <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, so when they beat state, I was like, okay, well, they can play defense. They've changed their plan and it's worked. So why not change it again? Yeah. And if you have the players that can think with the IQ and you can just make a change during the game, media breaks, all the extra time you get, why not? Right. Yeah. Four, two, four, two. Um, and so I think, I think they got a shot. I, I, I think it'll be, it'll be a great game. And you and I know this still all comes down to goaltending. Yep. It's always goaltending. Always. It's, it's, if if you get a hot goalie, none of this matters, right? Like you can you can put up your 40 shots and it won't matter. Some guy will have one goal and you'll everybody will be like, ooh and ah, and then and then you know, two years later you'll see the kid playing in the NHL, right? So um I have a question for you. Okay. I'm I want right. to get I wanted to get your uh, opinion. 
All right. Uh, where at the beginning of the year did you think the wings were going to be? Right around the same spot that they are right now. Okay. I thought just on the outside looking in, and I think that's exactly where they're going to finish. I think well, it's funny be because, like, to me, the experts, and I don't want to give Elliot Freeman too much credit, but it seems like guys were between talking about the team would be between eight, nine, and 10. And they had a, a good run kind of in the middle of this year. And everybody was talking about we were used to last year when they lost to Ottawa. And all of a sudden they're like, okay, this is our shot. This is our shot. Where people that weren't really following hockey around here started going, okay, yeah, they're winning again. They're winning again. Then they go on a, a down streak. Then they have an up streak. And then obviously they all thought they were going to beat Arizona twice and do all that. But to me, like I believe what everybody else, they were 9-10. And to me, all this has done is it's the regression is back to the mean where they should have been. It, like they're kind of lined up. Now we all know, we all thought who was going to take a jump. Yep. Buffalo and Ottawa. Yep. Now most people I probably didn't think Ottawa after, you know, the came here, but like both people were like, Oh man, New Jersey, you know, Ottawa, who's going to fall off Washington, Pittsburgh. Well, guess what? Those guys have so much veteran experience together that here they are again, they're still hovering around. And I, you know, I believe we all thought the Islanders were going to be better than they were too. And that's yep. why this division was like, Oh man, this, this division is going to be nuts. This division, and it's still kind of nuts. We're coming down the, to the end here and your Habs are probably going to affect a lot of this. So you, you, everybody's still involved at the very end, which I'm sure the league loves right now. But I still thought this team the whole time was probably a nine ten, and I believe most people did. So, like, when people are like, I, I guess I'm going to this. Why would they talk about getting rid of Lalonde? I mean, trust me, I know there's other guys out there, but like, what has he done? You wanted to get rid of Blasio, and he lost players. Now you got another guy here that you have some guys, but guys have been injured. Larkin, I don't know why. Somebody has to explain to me why every time he's gone, the team kind of folds up. I, I, he must be really good in the locker room. I mean, he, he brings that center presence. He wins a lot of draws. Um, and and the injuries. We know there's injuries tonight. We know there's calls because there's injuries tonight, right? So if we all thought that he was going to be 9-10, why are there people wanting Lalonde's head? Now, I'll give you a, he might be hot next year, but even if they have some type of improvement in the offseason, what's their goaltending situation? It's not I, consistent. What's We all know the second pairing a lot of people aren't happy with. Uh, you know, you get a lot of guys chirping about a former – pitcher's kid playing defense for the team and i'm like that guy does what he's capable of what he's being paid to do so i don't understand why there's so many people that want lalon's head or some things when i get there's some some pieces that need to move on but like this team is a 9 10 they're gonna end up 9 10 maybe by a point or two but how how do you put that on the coach how do you put that and i i just i think lalon should keep his job they're exactly where they should be and by next year they're hoping to be a six seven I think people are victims of their own expectations. I, I, I've said it forever. I mean, this yeah. this is a conversation. I remember having this almost five years ago when Steve Eiserman was hired. Mm -hmm. and, and it's almost five years, Gordy. He's hired on April 19th, 2019. Mm -hmm. And he flat out said, guys, this isn't going to be easy. I'm going to need you to be patient. He, what he didn't say is there's no, you know, Victor Hedman and Steven Stamkos here. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a process. And this isn't about just getting back into the playoffs. It's about getting the Red Wings back to that point that we were all accustomed to. Mm -hmm. and, and Gordy, what he didn't say, but anybody that follows this game knows, is that's generally generally called the five-year plan. We're not even five years in yet. Mm -hmm. To me, the clock starts in the fall. Get, give him his five years. Let's see where it is. And then we can have conversations about how close they are to that point. Or we can right. have questions uh, about uh, coach. We can have questions about this, that, and the other thing. I think that people are victims of, of their own expectations. I've, I've said it then. I say it now. And, you know, that's that's where we're at right now. You know, I mean, it, like, honestly, everybody, like Todd said, can't blame Steve. He's sacred. They need somebody to blame. Yeah. I, and, and you know what? To me, go stand in the mirror. Look at yourself in the mirror. This team wasn't going to be ready yet. Yeah, uh, come yeah. on, like knock it off, you know? Yeah. So, so I just, I, I, you know, I see the other side of it now. Right. So I'm just like, I, <laughs> how do you blame these guys? I don't get it. So no doubt. Hey um, man, good but, luck to you this weekend. Uh, we're, we're rooting you on. We, we definitely, I want to take the boys, Todd and Blake and Mike out to, to see you guys. Oh, look who just hey. showed his lovely face up as well. But uh, go blue coach. There he is. I ready saw the go. mask and everything <laughs> on my drive home. I love nice. this. Nice. Right, so we're ready to go. We're All right. Ready to good, go, buddy. good luck to you this weekend. And yes, good luck to your boys tonight as well. Hey, How's that? I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, let me know when you guys want to come on out, get you set up uh, for, for a game or two. And then, um, 
can't wait to sit here and listen to what Blake has to say about Jared Goff's comments. You got it. Thanks. Gordy Brown, head coach of the Motor City Rockers, having a fantastic season. Get out there and support them this weekend. They are at home at Big Boy Arena on Saturday. Always a pleasure, Coach. Go Good luck. All right, will. Gordy Brown kindly joining us. Okay, Jason, you made me laugh. Jason put on the screen uh, Sean and Sydney sitting in a tree. Or no, hold on. I got to I gotta go back on it because that was – Jason, I remember you and the boys giving me a hassle about ten years ago about my love for Sid the Kid. Uh, let me let me go up. Where where is that? Shauner and Sid the Kid sitting in a tree. K I S S I N. I can't finish the rest of the thing, but uh, yes, I, I love I love Sidney Crosby. Love him. Tremendous hockey player. Period. End of story. Love him. Generational talent. Um, and I sit, say that, and I mean it. Generational talent is uh, something that is thrown around way too loosely today. He is a generational talent. Do you have the, the clip of Jared Goff? Or, or yeah, is that what you're I about sent to it to Todd to play you're such for a us. Pro. You are such a gosh damn pro. I already gave a little talk on this because I was I'm listening, let, yes. Okay, I'm going to let you go off. He's got a point to a point. Okay. All right, but go ahead. Yeah. Are you ready go to ahead. play the clip? Go ahead, Todd. I have this like I probably need to drop it pretty soon here because I'm going to hopefully be in Detroit for a long time but I have this thing with our local media where like they they almost like relish in in negativity at times Mm -hmm. and maybe that's what gets clicks and that's what sells but it it's 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 no longer what they need to live in like hey guys like we, we have a good team we've had success like we can be happy about that we can celebrate that and not have to write about how like we're constantly the underdog like no like teams are going to be gunning them for us now like we're we won the division and all that and, I, and i'm probably overthinking it in my head just because it's the chip on my shoulder and the um competitor the competitor in me yeah. but um in that moment i was just giving that guy a hard time i actually really like him but uh, i think that's great and I- okay there's validity to what he's saying and i'm going to tell you why you and i talked about this a little bit all right um whether they want to admit it or not, these guys, these players are part of the Detroit Lions franchise. Mm-hmm. The Detroit Lions franchise for my entire lifetime has taken my heart and spit on it and pissed on it and crapped on it and put it on a steak and smoked it and seared it and grilled it and, and destroyed us in every way, shape and form. Now, okay. These guys shouldn't be held to the sins of Lions before them. The only way to change that is to win. They have won. They have had success. He's right. The narrative should change. It should change, okay? But I want to get to the flip side in a second because I want to get your take on this. I know you were all fired up about it. There's a flip side that nobody ever wants to talk about. And, and if I have to be man enough to say for the 1,399th time, I was one of those guys that Jared Goff was talking about. I was negative about Jared Goff. I did not think that Jared Goff was the answer. I did not think Jared Goff would be here. I did not think that Jared Goff was anything but a bridge. I was wrong for the 1,198th time, okay? But. There's a flip side there, but you go ahead and take it first. One playoff win or two playoff wins, I'm sorry, does not get rid of 30 years. Okay? So the media has the right because they've seen the other shoe drop a million times. So, yes. so throughout the season, they, are, they can still be negatives and be critical of the team. But at the same time, throughout the season, I think the media was pretty positive about this team. And there was there was a lot of hope. Now, if he's looking back to when he first came to Detroit and the negativity, a hundred percent, he like there was negativity. But guess what? They were bad, so they deserve to have that negativity. It's it's just the fact that he has to realize that fans in this town have been through a lot and they've seen 
one playoff win in however the hell long. And now they are seeing success, yes. But Lions fans have it deep down in them. They're waiting for something to go bad. No question. Second no, half of San Fran went bad. No doubt about it. No doubt. All right. So uh, let me, I, I need to talk about our friends at Wealth Advantage Group in a second, but there's a flip side that's very important to me. And it has always bothered me. Always, always bothered me because people don't get it until they have to get it. Okay. And I'm going to use your beloved Michigan Wolverines as an example to this. Okay. Michigan football fans in particular. But first, I want to tell you about our friends at the Wealth Advantage Group. And see that guy in the left, Mike Cusack? He's a huge Michigan football fan. And if you're ready to take charge of your financial future, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group. Located in a historic downtown Northville and owned by those two guys, Mike and Jeff Cusack, with over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, or already in retirement, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 states. The investment world is a complex one. So if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it might be time to reach out to a couple of experts. Those guys right there, the Hanson Brothers, Wealth Advantage Group. Give them a call, 248-773-8574, or view their website at www.thewealthadv.com. All right, uh, Blake, so we're talking about the Jared Goff thing. And, and I, I think you'll agree with me. I think he's got some validity to what he said. I don't think you crumble it up and throw it in the garbage. Here's the problem that I have, and this is what I ran into with a lot of Michigan football fans over the years. I would tell people as they were watching the 2009 Michigan Wolverines or the 2010 Michigan Wolverines or Brady Hoke year two, year three, year four, I, I would tell them, guys, this isn't good. Stop it. And basically, they would tell me that I'm not seeing what I'm seeing, okay? And I would say, guys, time out. I'm not coming at you. I'm not attacking you, okay? But but this defensive scheme in the Big Ten is never going to work. You don't know football. You're an idiot. You're a Sparty, blah, 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 all that crap. Okay, great. All right? You don't get it until you get it. Because now, when Jim Harbaugh started to get it going, that's when I could sit back and go, wow, isn't this amazing? This is what a good football team looks like. This is what a good football team looks like, okay? The argument that I had with so many people out there about Jared Goff, if I am man enough to admit I was wrong, he's more than a bridge, I was arguing with people that this guy wasn't a turnover machine. Look at his numbers. Mm -hmm. He turned the ball over constantly. There was a couple of years span with the Rams and then into his first year with the Lions. He wasn't good. Mm -hmm. And people argued with me, what are you talking about? You've got a preconceived notion. You're arguing fact with me. Fact. Past tense events. Okay. And, and it's, so, it's always so funny to me that usually the first guy out there that says, well, I think you owe him an apology. And, and I want to be the first guy to say it. I was wrong. I was wrong. Why were we having discussions? Go back and look at his numbers. Go back and watch his. He wasn't good. Period. Mm -hmm. His, his, you know, last Year and a half, really, with the Rams into his first year with the Lions. And for a spell in that second year as well, he wasn't good. What were we arguing? What 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 were you arguing with me? I, I can't. Now, if you want to say I knew he'd be better, okay, you were right. But that wasn't the, the argument was never that. It was always he wasn't good. Here's the crazy thing about covering sports. And those of you that have, have listened to me for years or watched me for years, I am flabbergasted why this isn't understood, okay? There are some people out there with an agenda. Make no mistake about it, okay? 
both good and bad. But Blake, to me, I think that reporting sports is really simple. If a team is playing well, you know what you should say? They're playing well. Mm -hmm. If a team isn't playing well, you know what you should say? They aren't playing well. If a player is playing well, I don't give two shits what your feeling about his future is. It, that means nothing to me. If a player isn't playing well, I'm not going to say he's playing well. I'm going to say he's playing like crap. And, and even, I, that's the issue that so many people have. Let's acknowledge, if I can acknowledge I was wrong about Jared Goff, how come people can't acknowledge he wasn't good? Mm -hmm. That's why so many people like me sat back and said, hey, guys, those numbers aren't good. Are you watching him? But people just wanted to argue about it, and it never made sense to me. Never even, made sense. even this season, when we were critical of the Lions, from Jared Goff's perspective, when people were critical of the Lions, what were they critical of? Because it sure as hell wasn't the offense. So, I, like, I understand also having your teammates' backs and everything, but their secondary was bad, period, yep. point blank. And that's what lost them that playoff game. Yep. So <laughs> we can still be critical and say they're a good team, but say, hey, they have some flaws here. Never made sense to me. I don't, and, and Jason, Jason, and that's okay. I always used to add that. And that's okay. Like, they aren't good, and that's okay. So, so Jared, I'm with you. Dude, let me say it again, okay? I, Jared, my bad, dude. You surprised me. Keep her going. I hope there's a next level there. I'm not taking anything away from you. And I know a lot of people out there will say, well, this is what happens when you protect your quarterback, et cetera, et cetera. No, you get your flowers, man. 100%. Like Dave said, Goff was trying to do more with less talent and forcing things. He has an O-line built to give him protection, wide receivers that can get open, make yards after catch, and a running back that fits Goff's offense. Yes, all of that. And let's give Goff himself credit, okay? But at the same time, I think what a lot of people want, and unfortunately a lot of athletes want, I think a lot of people want you to tell them something that isn't true. And I'm never going to be that guy. Never. I never I, like I'm very, very pro athlete. Like when it comes to everything, but also you have to be able to be critical of them. Mm -hmm. They want to live in their own bubble and do their own podcast, Draymond green, and no one can be critical of them or anything. And then they'll go on those same podcasts and be like, oh, everyone's so mean to me. That's not how it works. That's like not Todd, how any of this works. No, Todd, Todd Ravens game, Thanksgiving Day game. I, yeah. I, I mean, listen, it, that's, I'm going to tell you a quick story. And I don't know if you know this. I think some of you guys know this. And I hope that he uh, doesn't get upset with me saying this. I consider him a buddy. We, we talk a lot. Uh, there's a certain goaltender, a much maligned goaltender in this town by the name of Chris Osgood. And uh, I used to openly say that Chris Osgood was a passenger. I used to say it all the time. I used to say that Chris Osgood was a passenger on that great 98 team. And it wasn't like he lit the world on fire or anything when he went on to the Islanders and went on to the Blues. And uh, Chris Osgood doesn't deserve to be in the conversation with top goaltenders in the league. Said it a thousand times on, on the radio, okay? And on television. Chris Osgood completely changed his game. I think everybody knows the story by now. Changed his style, went to the butterfly. In 2008, the Detroit Red Wings do not win the Stanley Cup without Chris Osgood. I say it all the time. No disrespect to Hank Zetterberg. Chris Osgood should have been a near unanimous choice as the Conn Smythe Trophy winner. And then he took a team, people forget, in 08-09 that was really struggling. He came back and he took them back to the finals and this close to winning back-to-back -back finals. At that point in time, I have no choice, zero, none, but to say Chris Osgood has been unbelievable. 
Look at what he's done in his career. He changed himself. He won a Stanley Cup for the Red Wings. What what else could I possibly say? And and Blake, true story. Chris, don't get pissed at me. Um, Chris pulled me aside one day, did one of these, and I thought, okay, I'm going to get bitched at. Here it comes. I'm going to get bitched at. And you know what he said to me? And, and he, Ozzy's such a nice guy. He goes, I used to bleep and hate you. And I was like, oh, this ought to be good. And he goes, you know what? I got respect for you because you like you called it like it was. And and you you said I was wrong about this guy. And I, I, I said, thanks, but I'm just doing my job, man. Like, yeah, unfortunately, there are people in this business that that are incapable of doing that. And and if it sounds like I'm patting myself on the back, then sure, I'm patting myself on the back. But I've I've always said I've got to be that guy. If I'm wrong about something, I, I want to be the first guy to say it and everything. And, you know, Chris has become a buddy. And and I think part of it stems from maybe he understood that, yeah, I, I, I had a job to do. And it doesn't mean that I was right, but I had a job to do. And sometimes a guy deserves flowers and sometimes he deserves giant bouquets. And I mm-hmm. couldn't give enough flowers to a guy like Chris Osgood for what he did in 2008 and 2009. And, you know, listen, Jared Goff, if there's a next level there for you, it'll be the same thing for you. I I, I promise you, I, if you're not playing well, I can't say you're playing well ever. I can't. Sorry. The other thing from my perspective is, is like, I've listened to plenty of interviews of Jared Goff. I've listened to his post game stuff, everything he does in the community, everything about the guy. I'm like, this guy seems like a very like self-aware, funny dude, like good guy, everything. And so overall, I really like Jared Goff, like as a person and most of what he says, but this just seemed to me like totally out of touch, like with where he's at it, from my perspective. I think Blake, the best thing you can do is um, when you arrive at the top of the mountain, it might be time to have those kind of conversations. You're not yeah. there yet. Are we excited about next year? Absolutely. As somebody who lived through the transition from 91 to 92, do I think that's going to happen again? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No way. No how. Um, he, he, listen, you and I had conversations with our pal Lomas Brown about this. He was on both those teams. They went 12 and four. They lost two starting offensive linemen next year, turned into a disaster, started game one as a man, some guy named Jim Harbaugh threw a last second touchdown to beat him. And you know, the downward spiral started. I don't see that happening any way, shape or form. So guess what? If you take that next step, maybe then. You start having conversations like that. Maybe also, that. Also, not to be negative Nancy here, but if for some reason, and I agree with you, like their roster stacked, everything. But if there's one thing that can fall apart very quickly and turn this into a pumpkin, it's him. So just read the room a little bit. Because if he turns back into what he was, that that's not, it doesn't matter. You, what? To win in the NFL today, you have to have a quarterback. Todd brought up the Ravens game in Thanksgiving. Did you remember the game we were talking about it? I said, "Uh oh, Jared Goff is seeing ghosts again." Mm-hmm. And I don't remember what game it was, but I, re- I remember vividly talking about that. Uh, by the way, Blake from the Mitch Album Show on seven sixty WJR and Sports Rap. But I, I remember I brought that up to Lomas, and he was like, "You're right. You, you know, they, they, it, when he feels the pressure, whether it's real or imagined." there are some golf moments that happen mm-hmm. now they're happening less frequently. Okay. They are give again, give him his credit, but when they pop up every now and again, you're talking about Detroit lion fans who are, whether you want to admit it or not, they're waiting for the other shoe to drop Yep, right or wrong. That's part of our DNA. Okay. Now I have to separate myself from that when I do this job. But little Shawnee Belegian sitting at home watching a game, I am the biggest goo goo baby in the world who's constantly waiting for the other shoe to fall. Right. So I think sometimes you have to understand where you're at as well. And it's also 
like he has to realize you're in Detroit now. We actually we care about sports, unlike out in LA. Like you're gonna have critics. Yeah. We care. Like it's all we got. <laughs> Jason, thanks for the kind words. All jokes aside, coming from an original Facebook monkey. Sean are calling things as they are and admitting when he was wrong or giving people credit when it's due. That's why I'm still listening. The anti skip Bayless. Okay, I joke. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, see, I can't. I don't even like saying that man's name. I mean, he doesn't say anything that he believes. I mean, right? It's just, and unfortunately, I'm a firm believer. I think, Blake, that there are more sports fans out there like you and me. I think there are more sports fans out there like you and me that I don't want to. I don't want to um, be that guy. And I don't want to hear that stuff either. You know, I, I, I just, I think they look, we can be adult and talk sports. We can without having hot take here, hot take there and everything. I can't, it drives me out of my mind. I, I think there are more people out there like you and me in that regard. Yeah. And you're in the, you're at the point in your life where you don't get as worked up as you used to. And I respect that. I'm the one I get worked up sometimes. No, you, yeah, you do a little I don't, bit. I don't but... have temper tantrums anymore. I can't, I can't tell you the last. I don't have temper tantrums anymore. I can tell you the last temper tantrum I had, but I don't want to tell you the last temper tantrum I had. <laughs> no, I mean, and you know what? If and I can get it out now, and I feel a lot better. And I and overall, I still like Jared Goff. I'm wearing the Jared Goff hat. This is like the hat he would wear in every post game presser. I like Jared Goff. Just read the room a little bit, man. No, no I, I, that's I, all. I, no, I, I'm with you. Uh, listen, I, I have to uh, also tell you about our friends at Legacy Partners, if I may. Uh, did you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance? Our friends at Legacy Partners are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all of your insurance needs, whether it be personal, business, large, small. Listen, put these guys to the test. I've been saying it. Get your quote, give them a call, put them to the test. They are going to prove me right. Legacy has helped our listeners by fixing mistakes. Other agents have made asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And yeah, help save you some money. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you are paying too much and you could be underinsured. What are the God's green earth are you waiting for? Give them a call, 586-209-4106. It's 586-209-4106. Let them give you a quote. Doesn't It's not going to cost you anything. They'll prove to you what they've proved to so many others out there. Visit LegacyPartnersINS.com. Get started with your new quotes. Can't thank the boys enough. Joe and Alex and Dave, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Brett, thank you for the update. Pens 4-3 now. Is, this a, is it a must win or can't lose, Sean? Both. I agree. Both. What was the last game, though? Was it a must win or can't lose? Must win. I agree. I feel like can't lose is worse. In my opinion, I agree with you. Uh, Dave okay. said, I don't think the Raven game was his fault. The O line, which was great, had to move the backup uh, guard, Glasgow, to center, which uh, puts the backup at center and the third string at guard. It made a strength, a big weakness, and the Ravens exploited it. Uh, David, I'm not going to argue with your logic. Okay. However, when a guy is seeing ghosts and is playing poorly, I can't say that he looks good. Like, I'm not blaming Jared Goff specifically for what ailed him with the Rams. Let's not forget, Matthew Stafford got his knocked in, okay? He he really did that second season. I mean, he got, he got bounced around. Everybody and their brother knew that the Rams had had some, you know, upheaval with uh, the, the offensive line. And, and some of the issues that you saw a couple years earlier with Jared Goff certainly showed themselves with Matthew Stafford. But I hope you understand my point. I, I, I can't say after that game that Jared Goff looked good. 
And you're right. No, I mean, what quarterback likes pressure? Hey, man, I hope I'm pressured all game. No quarterback likes pressure. I think how a quarterback handles pressure is certainly something that can be on, you know, mm-hmm. a graph, so to speak. Yep. This guy here, that guy there. Jared Goff sees ghosts. He does. I, you know, that's the way it is. No, no disrespect. Did the wings tie it up? No. no. Petrie scored to make it 4 3. Okay. They're still in their mission. As far uh, as I Dave can see. Said, no, but the hole in the middle was too much to overcome. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah. They, no, no doubt about it. It's it just, I think this putting too much blame and putting too much credit in the lap of one person is, is, is kind of an old bit now. But that's a position you also play in the National Football League. Yeah, I mean it is. You know, right, right or wrong, I think you you know the name of the game. Um, I'm going to say it again, just to reiterate, uh, Blake. I think there's validity to what he's saying. I do. I, I think I think there's validity to it. I, I get what he's saying. And listen, how many fans? It's just like we were talking about with the Tigers the other day. And I know you and I were together all throughout the fall. You know, before I got fired and everything. Can I just sit back and enjoy a season? I just want, let me, let me enjoy a season. Yeah. You can sit back and say, they're not real. They're not like the tigers right now. You know what? I don't know how good the tigers are. Can I sit back and enjoy the fact that ah, they're off to a good start? Can I, can I do that? And I, I don't know. Maybe it's the old guy in me now. You know what? I, I had the opportunity to sit at home starting week one when you were over my house and refused to eat my food. That's just not true. Don't lie on here. You can do a lot of things. But don't lie to these nice people that are I watching. had the opportunity to watch almost every game with my son in a year where the Lions were damn good. I was I I I didn't sit at home and wait for the other shoe to drop. I sat at home going, okay, yeah, you know what? I'm a little worried about this defense, but gosh damn it, they're 10 and 3 right now. Whatever the case may may have been that particular week. And um that's the way I sit with it, you know. Uh, that, it, I, I, I'm just gonna enjoy it. I, if there are things that I need to worry about, I'll worry about them. Blake, full disclosure: you and I were both terrified late in the season that the Lions were going to get lit up by uh, the Rams, in particular. I thought it was a terrible matchup, especially with those two mm-hmm. receivers and what they can do to you. Uh, the secondary has been playing too poorly. I was terrified, but. Was I excited the Lions were in the playoffs? Absolutely. And that that superseded anything. You know what I mean? And then to win two games? Are you kidding me? It was glorious. It was glorious. I agree. Ravens D has made a lot of quarterbacks look bad. I think one game is hard to judge, but I agree with Sean. The flashbacks are a problem when a quarterback gets spooked again. Yeah. Just, you know, there's party that goes, uh-oh. You know, does that make sense? Like, uh-oh. Is, is this reappearing? <laughs> Like to I his said, credit, if, if things are going to go bad, it, it's going to be him. So yeah, um, are you ready I, to give me an OJification? I brought it up earlier, and I heard, I'm, you, now, I heard you talking about. Okay, it. I'm I'm going to talk to you like you, you're you're my kid. Okay, you know I I I got a little OJification earlier today. Look at that. What, we got some stats. Look at First that. of all, how many years that, is that 20 years after the OJ case? A criminal court jury found Simpson not guilty. Do you think OJ Simpson was guilty or not guilty? Percent saying guilty, 83% white, 57% black. When when was that in 2015? So it shows the changing sentiment over time. So all the way on oh, the left, it shows oh, after the cases. My language. And then it I'll, switches with time. So as you were mentioning, Sean, oh most gosh. people believe that he's guilty. And that switched right around 2007, 2010-ish. I have no idea if you follow this in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> nope. okay. Especially nope. the civil case. If you're one of those people that you think O.J. Simpson was, was innocent, listen, it, it, honestly, wake the bleep up. My gosh. Just read a little bit about the civil case. Just a just a little bit. Not a lot. Just read a little bit about the civil case. Blake, the analogy that I use to my kids, um, and I don't know if you heard me bring it up earlier. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's a fair analogy. I Tom, Tom Brady murders Giselle 13 years from now. 
So KB, my good friend from the Mitch album show, he compared him more to Peyton Manning because what Peyton has done like outside of the game. Okay. And I think from what I've been told now, I almost think it's the rock. Like, cause the rocks like stardom. OJ was everywhere. Yeah. He was, like he was, he was everywhere. I didn't realize I didn't, was, I didn't know how big of a deal he was. It really was as Todd put up that graphic. It really was a very sad commentary when the first trial happened on race relations in our country. It was a very depressing day for me. I like, I'm not, I'm not being funny yeah. because the criminal trial, again, one man's opinion, you could disagree. He couldn't have been more guilty. And I was wrong there. Yes, he could have been more guilty because then the civil trial came, which, which was like the most blatantly obvious thing in the world. But the reaction that people had from it um, was downright sad. It, it, it really was. And um, that was when I first started at my old radio station in Toledo, uh, WSPD. And to say that that um, dominated the radio waves, every show, not just the sports show, would be an understatement. Um, it was... Uh, <laughs> Blake, again, Peyton Manning or The Rock or Tom Brady are live on every television across the United States of America fleeing from 500 police cars behind them. During, like they cut away from the NBA finals for it. With, listen, 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 with, with, with Bill Belichick driving Tom Brady or um, yeah. uh, Reggie Wayne driving Peyton Manning or John Cena driving um, the rock because Al Collins was a guy that people knew, you know, it was his BFF and it was a guy that played with him at USC and played in the national football league. It was, it was surreal. I remember playing his day, watching that going, is this really happening? Is this, is this happening? Um, so yeah, that would, uh, that was the analogy that I used to my kids when that, um, FX show was on a few years ago because my kids were like totally into it because everybody was talking about it. And that was the analogy that I used. I think you could go with a uh, Peyton Manning uh, BC score to make it one, nothing. I'm sorry about that for you guys. Um, no, you're, but, not. you're a jerk, but listen, um, no, I, I, you know what I'd be doing? You know, seriously, you know what, if I was a jerk, you know what I do right now? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, wings are hot. You're wearing <laughs> wings. Wings are down five three. It's five three. Yeah. Well, done or finished. David said, "Yep, Sh uh, shorthanded goal. Pittsburgh five three. David and David, thank you very much. Yeah, it's uh, c'est la vie. I'll be done or finished Monday though. What's that? Done or finished? Finished. Okay. Finished." Look, I mean, it was small anyway. You know as well as I do. It was, it was small anyway. Um, yeah. that's, that's the way it is. So We tend uh, to handle small things really well, though, usually. I have 53, almost 54 years of experience. Oh, moving on. <laughs> is there anything else that you, any OJ thing you needed to? No, I like as a football player though, and I don't know how much you like. I very age, age doesn't register well with me, but like I just saw his stats from the one the fourteen games where he ran for two thousand yards, two thousand three, right? Two thousand three yards, yeah, and averaged one hundred and forty three yards a game. So like, that's my, insane. My dad, and it used to piss me off when I was a kid. My dad, when I would talk about how amazing Barry was, my dad, typical old man, you know what? You're just dumb. You never saw Gail Sayers play. You never saw O.J. Simpson. I'm going to tell you, you know, you think you know everything. I can, gosh, I can see the, the old man doing that shit. Oh, boy, potty mouth, sorry. <laughs> um, but for my dad, I can say that. Um, my my dad always said, like, seriously, um, Jim Brown, Gail Sayers, O.J. Simpson belonged on, like, 
a different plane than everybody else. He, and, and he took Gail Sayers down because Gail Sayers didn't, you know, play as long and had the knee injuries and everything. Um, the OJ Simpson that I saw was a broken down OJ Simpson. I, I remember vividly when he was with the 49ers mm-hmm. and he, he was, he was broken. It was over. It was done. Um, but you know, obviously I think the numbers and, and the, the, the videos and things like that speak for itself. And, um, Phenomenal football player. Um, he was everywhere. He was in the Monday Night Football booth. He was in movies. He was in commercials. Um, just seemed like such a likable guy. He really did. You know, always had that million dollar smile on his face. And um, that's the way it is. All right. Am I supposed to say something? YouTube helps us get closer. Am I supposed to say No, that? I think Todd said the quiet part out loud. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Brett said, just a question in general, what platform gives you the most publicity, uh, the Facebook or YouTube? Oh, okay. That was, that was the answer. So uh, thank you. we want, we want to grow our YouTube. It's really important to us and it will help Go us. On, in say the long term. Did I do good? By the way, I was supposed to put out those. Did I like the links? Did I do that appropriately? And everything? Yeah, I wanted you to put it on your Twitter, but you didn't, but see, I always, screw you, just something. Po- you just posted it on your Facebook. I always screw something up. Don't I? But you'll do. You'll get it I'll right tomorrow. tomorrow. I, it yeah, tomorrow. you're gonna get it right tomorrow. All I'll right, send you the link tonight after I post it. Before I get out of here, because I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna piss myself. Uh, can we talk about uh, our friends uh, with the Broadwell team? Can we? Can we do that? Yeah, of course. I would love to. When it comes time to buy, sell, maybe you're doing both. You need to contact the right agent. That agent right there. Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you'll ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of business. When it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and that everything goes smoothly when finding your new home. Buyer, seller, even first-time buyers, it doesn't matter. That's the person to contact. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. All right, Blake, any final thoughts before we get out of here? Yeah, I would like everyone out there to learn how to read an Excel spreadsheet. It's very simple. And then you would know when you're supposed to get to work if that's how your schedule is sent out. It's a pretty simple format. You just line up your name with the fucking day of the week and the time. And then you know, oh, that's when I have to be there. And if there's an issue there, then maybe we get that figured out before, I don't know, 10 minutes after you're supposed to be there. Sorry. I just had to get that out. It's, it's, I was supposed to be home way earlier than I was. And I'm sorry for being late. Sorry to all the listeners and the viewers. That's that's what happens. You know what? The 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 people that say things like whatever you need are usually the people that have to suffer. Isn't that the way that it goes? Yeah. Right? Yep. So I'm s i am just wanted to issue an apology to our all of our loyal watchers and listeners that I'm sorry for being late, but it was outside of my control. Rob said that's going to take some macros and a VBA script or two. <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, but it made me laugh. All right. We'll see you guys. Uh, Shep and I tomorrow morning at 10. Blake, thank you, Todd. Thank you, Gordy Brown. Thank you. I'm going to thank my pisser in about two seconds. We'll see you. Off the Air with Sean Belegian. Featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248-237-3257.